Okay, so problem 18, I think this is. Yeah, problem 18 is the maximum path sum 1. So this problem is to find the greatest sum you can get by going through the triangle. So, for example, in a smaller triangle here, it's 3 plus 7 plus 4 plus 9. Um, no other path through gives you a higher total so the idea is to scale this up and apply it to this bigger triangle now it tells you in the note at the bottom that you can actually do this um, using brute force so you can just calculate every single root so for example you can calculate this root down here and then iterate over and do like this root so you go like all the way down and then across here then you go all the way down across here and down and then all the way down and across here and across and so on and so on and eventually you'd find all these different totals you compare them you see which ones are highest and then there's your answer now that is doable but if you think of how long that's going to take um, it's going to take a long time because you're comparing like all these different routes to the number you, you're summing up all these numbers each time um, it's really not that efficient and it tells you although it's doable because there's only 16,000 routes for this one um, problem 67 apparently is the same challenge but with a triangle containing 100 rows so I'm not sure how many rows there is in this but it's definitely not 100 it's probably about 20 or something 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 so if it's only 15 rows and we're going up to 100 you can imagine how many more routes we're going to get um, so yeah definitely not feasible to do that so we're going to have to think of something cleverer for this 100 size one, so I'm thinking rather than do it then, why not just do it now? So, what I came up with is, instead of going through the triangle in the intuitive way by going from top to bottom, why don't we go from bottom to top? So, if we compare this bottom row, and we say this first element is a 4, the second element is a 62, well, any time we can get to this 4, we've got to be at the 63 and if we're at the 63 we can go from here to 62 so why would we ever go to this 4 is my point so the answer is we wouldn't so we can basically we can get rid of this we don't need to care about the 4 we can delete it now what we can do is because we know when we're at 63 every single time we're going to go to 62 we can just replace this 63 with 63 plus 62 and therefore have sort of made the triangle smaller so this here is going to end up 125 now we do this for the next number and we realize whenever you're at 66 you're only ever going to go to 98 because 98 is bigger than 62 so what we can do here is remove 66 and replace it with 164 because that's 66 plus 98 and so on so on so you can do this for the entire row you can end up with like um, all these, like all the bottom row being used, sort of, um, to find out the maximum put it in, and then you end up deleting this row. So you're slowly but surely getting rid of rows in the triangle. And obviously, once you've done this, you then do the same for this row and delete this row eventually, because this row will then total up to it, and so on, so on. So eventually, you're going to end up deleting all your rows. You're going to end up with one number at the top, and that one one number is going to be the answer. So let's get to coordinate. So we could look at the uh, the source code of the page and look at how to pull that, but I plan on doing that in another video because otherwise this video is going to have two sort of separate topics in. Um, but if you're interested in pulling it, then subscribe and it'll be in a video soon. The way I've done it is I just copy pasted it over, so not very interesting, but it's done. So yeah, let's get to using it. So the way it is is we've got a list of lists so we've got a list of rows and each row is a list of the elements in the row so if we just print this out so we say for row in triangle print row and then you should see what this is doing so there we go we see get the triangle printed out and obviously if you wanted you could make some like fancy um, format where it would actually print it out in a triangle shape but I don't care about that so what I'd like to do is loop through backwards and compare um, maximum elements and stuff um, actually would I even like to loop through this I don't really
I think the best thing to do is say like while so if we print out um len of triangle I think we get the number of lists in it so we should get like I think there's 12 rows we didn't we just say something like that so we should get 12 uh, 15 15 it is so we got 15 so we know that as long as that number yeah. is more than one we've not found our answer because like I say eventually we're going to end up with just a single number at the top of the triangle and that will be our answer so what we can say is we can say while um, so in instead of editing actually that's yeah okay so while len triangle whoops triangle is not equal to um one oh god not equal to one then we want to run our code that's going to reduce the triangle so we want to say um for i uh, sorry yeah for i we'll say for number um in and we want we want the number to be pulled from a specific row of the triangle we would like it to be the second to last row so for number in triangle um so the second to last row will be the minus two row um, and I'll, I'll prove this, I'll print it in a sec. Um, pr we'll just say print number and we'll see which row we're printing here and then I'm going to break to get out of that while loop. So, did I just save that? Not sure if I did. Apparently I did. All right. Okay. Yeah. So this has done. Um, this is basically looping through it backwards. Still, why is it doing this? Ah. Right. Okay. What I've done is um, I've gone from the zeroth element up to the minus two element and just printed out the list. Um, so what we need to do here is. Um, So if I just say, oops, minus two like that, there we go. So that colon was, uh, I should probably explain this because that was a little bit weird. So what it does when you put this colon in is it says go through, through the triangle and start at element zero because you've put nothing before the colon. So it starts at the beginning, which is why you start at the 75. Let me just print this one tomorrow. So it starts at the 75 because that's element zero. Now, then it iterates to element 1, and it prints out the next row, so 95, 64, you can see is the next row. Now, oh, I'm not actually showing the command window, whoops. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, we see we've got element, um, I should probably make things fit as well. Hopefully you can still see that. Uh, actually what I'll do, I'll just keep it big but I'll just work at the top of it so if I, uh, I make that like that and then why is it now gone weird? ok never mind, I'll keep it like this I'll just work up this top so you can see it anyway, so what this is doing is it's starting at the beginning and basically going up to the second last element um, so you can see from what it printed out, it's printed out up to the row that starts in 91 which is 2 away from the end, so you've got the end which would be the uh, the minus 1 you've got this row which would be the minus 2 row and then it, it prints out up to that row so it prints out all the rows before it so when we get rid of this colon what it's doing is it's just um, finding the second to last row so if I then save this and print this so this is then iterating over that single row and returning just the numbers um, hopefully it makes sense if not have a play about with it yourself like create a list of lists and just do some like for loop 
printing um, with the different syntax in these square brackets. So, yeah, basically this is what we wanted here. It's printing out each number um, from the row. Now what we want to say is for each num for each number, um, we want to say number is equal to number plus, and then we need the max of the two numbers below it. Um, so we want max of so it's going to be triangle. Uh, minus one because you want the last row, but then we want the same elements. Okay, so the way we're gonna have to do this, we can't actually use four number. We're gonna have to like loop over using like a, a counter sort of thing. So we're gonna have to say like four i in um, range and then len. I always find myself doing this, if anyone knows a better way of doing this, then let me know. So because we, we're now creating like this, um, so what this is going to do, is i is going to return 0, then 1, then 2, all the way up to the length of this row that we're iterating over. So we're going to say like, instead of number, we're going to say triangle minus 2i. Um, so if I just print this again, you should see that this is actually the exact same thing. It's just different syntax for doing it. So you see there, we've actually printed out the exact same thing again, um, but in a different way. Now, because we've done it like this, though, we've now got a counter. So this i is our counter for which element we're at. So when i is 0, we know we're at 63. When i is 1, we're at 66. So now, because we know this information, we can use it to get information from the next row. So we can say this number is going to equal itself plus and then the max of the number below it. So it's going to be triangle, but then instead of minus 2, it's going to be minus 1 because we want the number below it. It's going to be the same position. So um, it's going to be the max of the. So 63 is the zeroth element, 4 is also the zeroth element. So we want the max of the zeroth element and the firsteth element, which is 62. So we're going to need the max of the zeroth element, which we've got, plus the um, the firsteth element, which is going to be instead of i, it's going to be i plus one. Now, if we run this, um, and then what we want to do is print the triangle, and hopefully this works. Okay, so I hasn't printed it very nicely. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say for i in triangle print i. Oops. There we go. So, so this worked. You can see we've got. Um, our second to last row now, this um, this row right here, is now full of hundreds. Um, that wouldn't be the case if it hadn't worked. So if we just quickly check, so we now don't have a row that starts 63. So this row right here is now gone. Uh, 63 we said would be replaced with 125, and you can see that's our first element. Now 66 we said would be, would be replaced with 164, and you can see that's our second element. So we can see this is working, but now a problem we've got is this last row is now there and we want our while loop to eventually end on its own without us breaking. So what we're going to need to do now is we want to delete the last row. So we can do this by using a, a method called pop. Um, so a list method it is. So what you do is you say triangle dot pop and then the index of what you'd like to pop so we're popping the last row. What this does is it just sort of like it, um, it cuts the row if you like. Like in uh, Windows, if you cut a file, you can then paste it somewhere. So what you could say is you could say like um, last row equals triangle dot pop minus one. Now if we print that triangle and then underneath we say uh, print last row was A 
and then this here should print the last row so we, we can see what we actually just popped whoops where have I done that there okay so you see we've got our triangle again we've now got our row with our hundreds in so that's still working but now instead of printing the um, the last row like as part of the triangle it now acknowledges that the last row has now been popped and that is what we've just printed out so pop just sort of it deletes the row but it also if you set it equal to something then it returns it so you, you could just get rid of this and you wouldn't actually be returning it you'd just be deleting it um, so if we just comment this out actually we'll just delete this okay I need this again there you go so you see we've now just got our triangle um, so yeah now what we need to do here is if we get rid of the break we should actually see this work so there we go um, so I'm gonna go through what this is actually printed out so this was where we started it up here you see we've got the first row again uh, that we just solved a second ago now once it's done that it's now looped through this code here once it then says is the length of triangle um, equal to 1 yet if it's not then we need to carry on so it's not equal to 1 yet so we're going to carry on now it deletes this last row uh, sorry no it doesn't it then takes this row right here and does the exact same thing so 91 plus the max of 125 or 164 and add that on and then does that whole thing then deletes that bottom row again so you can see we've now got 255 here which is um, which is 91 plus 164 so it's got that bit right then it deletes that row and then so on so on you see the triangle gets progressively smaller and smaller and eventually we're left with three um, elements right here so we've got 75 we've got 995 we've got 999 so it says which one is bigger out of 995 and 999 obviously it's 999 adds that to 75 and then that's our answer and then if we look at the answer down here you see that is the actual answer so yeah we solved it and now this method um, because it's like really general so you can see we've not actually um, we've not actually used anything in this that's like specific to this triangle um, we've just looped over whatever the length of the triangle is we've looped over however many elements are in that particular row that we're in we're popping out rows until we get to the last row like everything's general um, so yeah this should easily scale to a 100 row triangle um, and probably when we get to problem 67 you'll see me just literally pop and um, copy in the triangle and then run this code and it should work so that episode will be very very quick um, but yeah that's it for this episode um, there is going to be a follow up to this one so like an 18.1 where I just show how to pull the triangle from the HTML code um, so if you're interested in that feel free to subscribe it'll be up soon hopefully um, might get around to doing that tomorrow so yeah if you like the video like it um, if you have any questions or if you're stuck with anything leave a comment below I'll definitely help you and that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.